going on everybody back for another one i don't know if y'all can see me now you can get the smoker going and we are preparing to move some bees for in the morning the way i move bees with the having the bees on the pallets and moving them with a skid steer and a trailer The skid steer has lights and everything, but the way, just the height of the trailer and where the lights are positioned, when you, if I try to load at night, the, the loader for the skid steer is in the way of the lights and I just can't see anything at night to load. There's no way I can see where I'm at with the hives in front of me. It's just a, a mess. So. What I've done, what I always do is load first sign of daylight, my first group. And then by the time I'm loaded, it's usually pretty, I mean, it's full, sun's up and everything. It's usually 9.30 or, yeah, usually 8.30 or 9, depending on how far I gotta travel and everything. But we've been, today's August 7th, or tonight is August 7th. So we're in the middle of summertime. We've had high temperatures in the hundreds and over a hundred for weeks. I don't know how long, probably over two weeks. Probably close to three weeks, I would think. We had a little reprieve the past couple of days, though, and I'm trying to take advantage of it and move my last groups of bees. I got 72 more to move. I've already moved 634, something like that. The problem I have with moving bees in the summertime like this when I go to cotton is it's so hot the bees don't you know we're in the dearth the bees don't have anything to work so they're all bearded out during the day and then at night the wind just stops completely so they don't have any airflow so they stay bearded out on the front of the hive and with me moving them in the daytime I really need them all inside the hive so I'm not losing them going down the road. So that's why we're out here tonight. Everybody's at home and most of them are in the box. There's some bearding on the outside, but it, we, like I said, we've had a reprieve from the high, hot, hot temperatures. We're supposed to have some cool nights compared to what we have had, so I figured that would help keep them in the boxes a little better, or at least make them, make it easier for them to go in there at least. So what we'll be doing is smoking them in the box, putting on these metal screens that I showed y'all in a previous video, and we'll be getting up early in the morning and coming to load them up. I don't know if I'll shut them all in tonight, Sometimes I like to get up about three o'clock and go out and do this because that's the coolest part of the day. Kind of like it's darkest before the dawn. It's coolest before the dawn too. And as probably most of y'all know watching this video, dealing with bees at night is not very fun. And one of the most important things is to use a red light because bees don't see red. Well, they they can see red, but I think it's, it shows up black to them. So, you know, they kind of kind of don't see it, I guess. If you were to come out here with a regular flashlight, a white light, they would all fly directly towards it because they use, like during the day, they use the sun to navigate. So they see a white light 
they're going to kind of fly to it like a moth or they're going to fly towards it like it's the sun. And then that's, that's like putting a target on yourself because they fly towards you and they're mad and they'll sting you and whatnot. So not fun times. So use the red light. Let's go and take a look around and see what we got. Little bit of bearding, not much. Junk Caesar, a little bit of bearding. That ain't too bad, give him some smoke. And they'll start to slowly work back into the entrance while they're doing that and move on to the next one. Some of these, I have the lid moved over to the side so they can get more airflow in this hot weather. I actually had them all like that, but earlier today I came through this yard and put some feed in their feeder. And the ones who weren't bearding too bad, I just went ahead and moved the lid all the way over just to make tonight a little faster. So this one I'll have to close them up in both their entrances and they like to cluster up under here got to make sure and get them in there move on to the next one Sometimes this can take a while. Most, nearly every time it does take a while. There's a good cluster up under there. Usually make several rounds going through, smoking them. Come back around, smoke some more, you just make slow progress. That one was bearded quite a bit, can't see it now with all the smoke. Keep it, <coughs> keeping that lid open like that helps with the bearding in the fronts. <coughs> in the past, I haven't done that. In the front of the, every eye will just be black because it's just solid bees. That is not fun. And I use W clips on my pallets. It gives you this space here between the boxes. And that can be a downside when you're doing this because when it's hot sometimes, you know, if I have this, these lids moved over for them to get air over here, they'll come out here and they'll cluster in this crack here and that can be a pain to get them out of there. There's always something about bees that is a pain. First go around is just kind of like waking them up. After this first round, they usually start moving a little faster. So that's one round. Let's go back to the one we started at. See, cleared up a whole bunch. Hardly any left. Give them another round. A 
And this one, they had them all clustered under there. They're all gone, except for a handful. Hear that roar. These are mostly in. This one had a big cluster. They're pretty much gone. See, in the front of this hive was almost covered, if y'all remember. Seeing some of them migrated up here. So they're gonna, they're gonna be a bit of a pain. I'll shoot some smoke in this gap. See them bees fanning, they're just blowing that smoke. That's crazy. <coughs> There's not a breath of wind out here. That's all bees work. Look at that. I hope y'all can see that. <laughs> and once you get all the bees inside, or most of them anyway, I never, never get all of them. Might be just a handful on the outside, but that's fine with me. Some of them will cling on while we go down the road. Put the moving screens in, these metal screens. They can still get air, but keeps everybody inside. Can start pinning all these screens up. Use these thumbtacks. Put one per screen. Just put it right in the middle. I try to. Ready for transport.
bees are moved and supered up and turned loose, of course. We'll see what they do. Still got 24 on the trailer. I didn't put them all here because I've actually got 48 just down the road that I moved here about a week ago. So I've got 72 colonies here total on 600 acres of sunflowers. What do y'all think of them sunflowers? Pretty crazy, right? Never thought I'd see sunflowers, grown sunflowers in the Texas Panhandle, like farmed sunflowers. We got wild ones that are a lot smaller, but never thought I'd see these. But here we are. Here's a bee working it. Get covered in pollen going for that nectar. So the way I understand it, the sunflowers, the florets open from the outside and work their way inside. And the first, it'll be alternating rings of male and female. The first one will be a male ring and it produces the pollen. And then the ring inside of that will be the female and that'll have the nectar and the flowers are designed for the petals to attract the pollinator and they'll land here and then they'll walk across into the center of the flower and as they do they're walking across that the male flowers first and then pollinating the females and then you'll have some flower seeds i don't know if these are for seed like bird seed or whatnot, or if they're going to be for oil. I have to ask the grower. There's another bee. There's another bee. Pretty crazy. Better document it because who knows if I'll see it again. But I'll probably have one or two more videos on the sunflowers, hopefully. But got still got bees on the trailer and they need to go to cotton, so I better get on the road before it gets too hot. Cotton bees are out, turned loose. It's about, got them here and it's about 85 degrees. So starting to get a little warm, but they're still all right. This spot ain't as pretty as the last one, but hopefully it'll produce the same. No cotton over there. There is some up on this hill here. There's a irrigated circle up there. Half of it's cotton and it'll be this closest half is cotton. About 240 acres, I think. And then on the south side of it, a couple more circles. I think within a mile and a half here, there's probably 350 acres of cotton. And it is super late. 
normally I'd be in a quote unquote normal year, I would be putting bees on cotton in mid July, mid to late July. Here we are August 8th or 9th, I think. And it's not even blooming yet. It's still got a little while before see the first blooms, I think. Our spring was so terribly wet that most of the cotton in the country got drowned out. And then by the time it dried out enough, it was way too late to plant. So it all got replaced with milo or sorghum. So I had slim pickings this year to try to find cotton. And with it being so late, I don't know what the flow is gonna be like, if there will be one. It's gonna be the middle of this month and then the peak of the flow would be like the beginning of September. I don't know, we'll just have to see. Won't know till it's all over with. So I guess we'll just have to leave them here. I'm gonna get some supers on them and try to be patient and just see what happens. <laughs> 